Hi, this is Owen. I'm going to talk about Blade Runner 2049. It's the new movie in the Blade Runner series, or the sequel to the last one that came out in the 80s. I always thought that the first Blade Runner was sort of a crime noir cyberpunk movie. And this new one capitalizes on the cyberpunk genre, which has kind of been underutilized, or at least it hasn't been that successful. Uh, the, the last one I can remember is maybe iRobot, or maybe uh, Automata with uh, Antonio Banderas, but that wasn't as well funded and as well done as this one, because let me tell you, people, Blade Runner 40, 2049 might be one of my favorite movies this year, and let me tell you why. First of all, first things of all, we'll start with Ryan Gosling, who I, not gay or anything, or I, just, I, I, I got like a total man crush for Ryan Gosling. He's just really cool actor. I loved him in Drive. I loved him in uh, Place Between the Pines. I just really like him. I, I even liked him in um, Blue Valentine. But this movie was awesome. He plays... Uh, a Blade Runner. Now, if you don't know what a Blade Runner is, they have these these android people call it replicants, and he hunts them. But he happens to be one himself. They tell you right away that's not a spoiler. Uh, he's that's not a spoiler. Uh, um, but I will do some spoilers, so be prepared to get the story a little bit spoiled. The first scene. We meet this guy, it's Dave Batista, and he's farming maggots because there's not that much food left, and that's a source of protein, but he's a he's a replicant, and he's, he's there to turn him in. And there's this crazy fight where he takes his head, and he just smashes Ryan Gosling's head against the wall, and you're like, holy shit, and... You have to know he's a replicant then, because no human would survive that. Honestly, he just puts his head through a wall. Uh, he does get the upper hand. Um, I really like the the cop lady, his uh, sergeant, who's played by Robin Wright. Uh, she was great in this. I, she's just been on a roll. She's Whatever she's in, she's great. She was in Wonder Woman. She's great in this. Um... Later on in the movie, we get Edward uh, James Olmos, who was in the original, uh, but he's not a cop anymore. Well, I, so it was cool that they threw him in. Uh, another uh, actress that I liked was uh, Anna D. Armas. Uh, she's greatness. She plays. Now this, I guess I'm gonna do some spoilers. She plays Ryan Gosling's hologram girlfriend. She's basically the equivalent of, like, an internet or, like, cam girl girlfriend. And I just watched her in this, and, you know, I just, it was really cool how they did that relationship between her and him. And that's when they bring in Mackenzie Davis, who I also think is great. Uh, she's on that show, Hot and Catch Fire. Uh, I love Mackenzie Davis. She's great on that show. Um... She plays a replicant hooker, and there's this really cool scene where uh, Anna D. Armas and the replicant hooker, uh, Mackenzie Davis, merge together to get, like, because uh, it's really, like, I love it. It's like one of my favorite scenes in the movie, uh, because it's very cyberpunkish, but sensual at the same time, and... I saw the movie in Dolby Digital. I don't recommend it. Maybe go see an IMAX. But the Dolby Digital, uh, the Dolby, the, the chair was shaking the whole time. In parts, it didn't need to. But I digress. The movie was amazing. The, the cyberpunk elements were beautiful. Uh, the director is awesome. Dennis Villeneuve, Villeneuve Prisoners, Arrival, Sicaro. This guy's, like, hitting them out of the park. And this one's just another one. And I was a little worried, because it's a sequel. 
And anytime you do a sequel to a series, you kind of get your creativity card questioned. It's, it's, it's harder to do source material when you were being given the platform to do whatever you want. But I don't think this, but he was up for a challenge. It was beautiful. And another spoiler, Harrison Ford doesn't really show up to later. Um, they sit in, in the synopsis, they say, uh, K, uh, a Los Angeles police officer is looking for the Deckard, uh, yeah, Deckard, um, Uh, yeah, uh, Harrison Ford's character, and that's not really the truth. He's looking for something. It's a mysterious movie. He's. They find out that a replicant was able to have a baby, and they don't want this to get out in the public, because if other replicants get the, the word of this, they're going to start reproducing, and before you know it, there's going to be more replicants than people, and then there's going to be, like, they're just going to get rid of people. And it's very, it's it does sound a little bit like Terminator or IROC Robot, but it's not really. It's more organic than that. It's more, it's better. It's smarter than Terminator because Terminator is just like, and the robots take over and they blow up everything. This is more organic. And, um... Because it was written by uh, Philip K. Dick. The book was called uh, Do Androids Sleep? Or Dream of... Do Androids Dream of Sheep? I believe it's in the name of the book. I didn't read it. I'm not a big book reader. I'm more of a comic book reader. You know, I just... You know, my ADD, when, when I see words, it's just like, where am I going with this? And I, I try to visualize the words and look at the words at the same time, and it throws me off. So I can read books, but I just not programmed to read books. If I was like freaking Johnny Five from Short Circuit, I wish I could do that. Just like and just read so many books, but I can't. I can do that with comic books. But I'm getting off the track here. Uh, what am I missing? Um, oh yes, um, Sylvia Hoax played Love, and she was this um, Jared Leto's hench um, replicant. And I have to say, other than Amy D. Armas, I loved this part. She was very sinister. Like, she was, like, scary. Like, there's parts where, like, holy shit, I'm scared of this chick. And, like, she just hits some dude in the back of the neck, and his neck just, like, snaps in half. And he's, like, laying on the ground. He's, like, and his eyes is red, and he's, like, I thought it was crazy. There's, it's not an overtly bloody movie. Like I said, it's more... And you know, I heard there was some dude next to me, and he's on his phone, and then he fell asleep halfway through the movie, and he's sleeping, and he's looking at his phone, and he's sleeping, and his, I just wanted to punch a dude in the face, because, like, seriously, like, he didn't look up when the action parts came on, and there is action, and that's why I think people will like this one, to, I'm not gonna sound like an old fart and say, millennials will like it better because it has more action, but it does have more action, and I think a newer generation would appreciate this one more. But you really got to first watch that first one, because if you don't, it's like skipping a chapter. It, it, it's like going straight to Empire Strikes Back. You know, you really don't know what the hell is going on if you don't watch that first movie. Um, I do like the special effects of the city, where, like, there was this blackout, and it, it's all run down. The city's worse than the first one. Like, half the city's blacked out, and some of it's ran. And the, the parts of the city that, that's still working, it's all slummy and very cool. Lots of reasons to go see this. And I was a little pissed off that it didn't make a two week, two weeks of uh, the box office. It was to Happy, Happy Death Day, which... I mean, honestly, to me, it was like your average PG-13 horror movie. But um, I, I guess I could get into Jared Leto. He plays basically like the Jesus Christ replicant. 
he's like got this cult of replicants and he's like he's just like the maker, you know, and he's got this dream of breeding replicants and replicants, thousands and thousands of replicants taking over. And um they kind of let it open ended at the end as to because he didn't get taken down. Uh there was this cool fight at the end between Ryan Gosling, K the replicant, and the 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 hench chick. I thought it was such a beautifully shot action sequence where they're fighting and there's waves and it was just nuts. It was like freaking like action orgasm. You know, it was like but um yeah, I thought Dave Batista would hinder the movie. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't hinder the movie. He was in the first scene. He did, 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 had a few lines. Did a fight scene, which he's good for because he's freaking jacked to the gills. Uh, beautifully shot. I I do think I, I it it nearly took out my first place movie, which was Logan. I mean, this nearly KO'd Logan. I mean, it nearly KO'd it, Logan. Um, but don't expect a freaking action movie. If you ever played like L.A. Noir or old, watch like old Humphrey Bogart movies, this is basically an old Humphrey Bogart movie with androids and, and neon and all of that going on. So be prepared to unravel clues and, and stuff like that because you're not there. There are some cool fight scenes and explosions, like for instance when Ryan Gosling finally finds, um, God dang it, just give me a second, let me get to Harrison Ford's name, because I, I can't, shoot, 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 it, uh, yeah, Decker, <laughs> that's it, that's his name, and he, when he finds him, it's this crazy, because he doesn't trust, um, Ryan Gosling, he thinks he's, he's, like, one of the, the, the Blade Runners there to off him. And there's this really cool, like, fight between them where the whole place is booby-trapped. And they, it's like a casino. And they fight each other in this, like, casino hole. And there's, like, these holograms of Elvis going off. And I thought it was a really visually cool scene. Um, like I said, Anna D. Armas was amazing in this movie. And, uh... Yeah, it was, like, sad, because she's, like, this, like, an internet girlfriend, and he, he's to himself, in a way, you know, so it's, like, you know, he doesn't really care about, like, he's, like, an introverted dude who goes to work, he's a Blade Runner dude that goes to the Blade Runner stuff, does the Blade Runner things, and he does, it's, it's just, it's, it's I really, like, relate it to the character. I thought he was a really cool character in the movies because I just really, I really, really, really like this movie a lot because it's just so cool to see a smart movie for once that's not just, you know, like, like Geostorm. It's, it's all CG and it looks like garbage. Every CG scene in this movie is used, like, the, the, the cars look cool. It's just like it's one that like all the CG was was put it like there was thought put into each CG effort. It was like we don't get that many cyberpunk movies, and I think it was awesome that this one got it right because who knows? Because at the box office it didn't do that great. We might not get another cyberpunk movie unless they decide to make a sequel to this, which. Um, you know, fingers crossed they do. Um, but, yeah, I think I covered most of the actors. Um, and the, the, the cinematography was great. The, um, just the, the, just the, you know, like, the Dennis Villano is always pretty good with um, the cinematography and visually and telling a story. But, um, other than that, my final grade for um, Blade Runner is an A+. Simply. It's an easy A+. 
which brings it to the top of the list for the year. And honestly, um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, if you saw it and you loved it, let me know. Like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, I'd like to hear that too. But don't, yeah, I, you know, but be reasonable. You know, don't be like, wasn't true to the original or, well, maybe if you, if you read the book and you, I'd like to hear that if you did read the book and you had some, you know, credible reason for not liking it. But other than that, if you just think, oh, it's stupid, you know, now what? <laughs> yes. No. But, um, like and subscribe. That's it for this time. On Cinema Outlaws. Take care.